Hi everyone, this is Dawn Richard, also known as The Awakening with Dawn, and this is the Wake Up to Real Love podcast, where we share stories of struggles and triumphs in love, sex, and relationships, along with expert advice to create more conscious connections. I am super excited today and honored to have my guest, Robin, Robin Ducharme. She is a professional matchmaker and love coach and the founder and head honcho of Real Love Ready. She is a vision wrangler and head cheerleader. I love that you say that about yourself. <laughs> head cheerleader for the Real Love Ready team. And this is a team because this is a worldwide mission. She's driven by her passion for all things love, and she has an entrepreneurial spirit, and she's on a mission to help others get more intentional about designing the relationship they want. She curates meaningful shared experiences that bring our community together to laugh, learn, and celebrate evolution in our individual lives and partnerships. And her personal motto, which of course I resonate with, is love changes everything. Welcome, Robin. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. Hi, I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to dive into so much depth, but I want to start off because I was um, on your webpage and I saw that your like couple is Ali and Noah from The Notebook. And when I saw that oh, movie, I bawled my eyes out, of course. <laughs> I, I want to know why, why them? That movie really touched me. And the first time I saw the movie, um, it's funny, I can't remember who I went to the theater with, but I left like you said, and I was absolutely, like there are very few movies that I can watch that actually, like I'm sobbing. Like, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> I was uh -huh. absolutely doing that at the end, <laughs> especially because they are, they, their love had like started out just, it was so much fire and passion uh -huh, uh -huh. and intensity. And they fought for that love. In mm -hmm. the end, they ended up together. Mm -hmm. And the story evolved to where they were this older couple and he was taking care of her mm -hmm. in her, whether she had dementia or Alzheimer's right. and the family didn't recognize her anymore, but he was by her side and reminding her of their enduring love mm -hmm. and all through story. And I am like a sucker for, for good story. Right. And their love story was just something that brought her back as well. Every time, mm -hmm. you know, um, he would play the piano for her and she would come back and remember their life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, it showed so many things. It showed, um, like it showed the intensity of, of how much you can love, you can love somebody and stand by their side. Um, there was so much joy and in the end it was like love prevailed, right? Yeah. Like they both, they, they died together. Yeah. So I, yeah. like it, it's, there was, there was, there was actually, um, like it wasn't a fairy tale. Because it just showed a lot of the, the, the struggles. Like imagine being being with a partner that was going that's going through that, right? I mean, I it happens in real life. I have family. I have a family member that is going through. Um, my aunt and uncle have been married for like their life, their lifetime, uh -huh. and she's going through. She's she's now at the beginning stages of Alzheimer's, and um, you know they have such like a beautiful love story. But this is going to be a challenge for them. Yeah. So. Like this, 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 so you can relate on many different levels. So I just, yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I think, I think that's the thing, you know, that, that, you know, the fireworks and the stuff that they show at the beginning, this is the fairy tale, right? That people think, oh, this is all love is just the, the spark and the passion and the electricity and the chemistry. But then as your love evolves, it matures and it grows. So it's not just this chemical superficial thing. It becomes a daily choice. That's for sure. Of how you're showing up and choosing love. Yeah. Partnership yeah. is, um, our relationships are, are challenging. And I think that that is, there's so much beauty in our relationships, but there is so much challenge in our relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's true for what we have with our children, right. with our family, with our friends, our colleagues, yeah. and of course our partners. Yeah. And so why are we not talking more about that? Yeah. Right. And then well, actually asking for help in that and, and like getting the support we need to have healthy partnerships. 
Well, that's, that was my whole intention of this podcast is to say, is to normalize people's struggles. Yeah. Like we deal with so many yes. different issues and people have, I, I feel like, um, you know, in the past probably 50 years, um, our, our humanity has, um, become more aware and, and, and being more open and honest about talking about depression, um, anxiety, addiction, abuse, um, uh, infidelity. I mean, all of these things have been coming more to the forefront. And I really feel like the intimate issues around relationships are sort of the last frontier of, hey, let's get real about this stuff. Yeah. There's no shame in your struggle. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So what did, what did you learn from your parents about what love is and what a relationship is? The example that I grew up with, with my parents' relationship, um, was one full of struggle mm. and conflict. Mm -hmm fighting, very loud yelling. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't remember my parents getting along for stretches of time. Wow. You know, you know, it, and, I, and I think if I was to think back, like maybe that's not entirely true because, um, you know, there were, there was definitely many, many nights when my dad would come home. He, we had, we had family dinners, like most nights a week, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Like we grew up in such a loving home. Like that's the thing is our parents, are, both my mom and dad, like are beautiful people. Uh -huh. And they're just so loving towards people in their lives and giving and um, fun and generous and kind and all these things that, you know, they taught us to be, uh -huh. my brothers uh -huh. and I. Um, but as a couple, there was just a lot of strife. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, you know, my mom did her best to help my dad with his business. And my dad was a great provider and all these things. But at the end of the day, um, they separated In numerous times. We moved out, like so my, mom, my brothers and I would stay with my mom. My dad would move into some other place. And this happened repeatedly while we were growing up. Mm -hmm. So even though it was like they were making attempts to make it work, uh -huh. Like it just, it, it was so much instability. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, I think what I, what I learned um, was that your, and so when my, when I was married and when I was going through my separation mm -hmm. with, with my former husband, uh -huh. I was just so, it was like, I, I had already experienced what it felt like to have divorced parents uh -huh. and separated parents. But the one thing that I understood or what I wanted to create with our separation was just maintain that foundation. And that foundation is absolutely that my kids are loved, they're safe, they're taken care of. There's no doubt that that's ever going to change. Uh -huh. They're going to live in two separate homes. But it was very important to me that David and I maintain that strong foundation of our connection mm -hmm. because that's going to keep our kids' stability on a level ground. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not possible for a lot of couples, but that was absolutely our priority when we went through our separation and our divorce. And we've maintained that. How did you come to the decision to get separated? Because I think this is a struggle for a lot of people, myself included. I mean, 27 years it took me to, come, to, to make that decision because I kept struggling with the question, you know, throughout our conflict, knowing that this was not a healthy relationship but still saying, you know, but I still value the family and I, you know, and we are loving individually, but for some reason as a couple, we couldn't resolve whatever was going, that strife and struggle, like you said about your parents. So how did you come to that decision with your, with your former husband? It was, um, I was, I, I, I think back on, like, it wasn't just like, um years and years mm -hmm. of me knowing that something was missing it wasn't like that mm -hmm. with with us with me um and i think if other people around us were to look back and be like a lot of people were shocked that i was 
that I had made this decision for us uh -huh. because we had a, a happy marriage. We had a loving partnership, um, happy family. And we had gone through, I had gone through, but of course us as a family had gone through um, tragedy in you know the four years before we divorced or separated. With your um, dad twin, and your twin. Yeah, yeah, my twin brother passed away suddenly. And then two years later, my dad passed away suddenly. Like within, you know, you find out like they just, they're gone, they're gone, right? And That's, so- I cannot imagine how much grief and shock and- Yes, and, and it, it doesn't, and that's not a short-lived thing, right? Like it, no. I remember being in a fog for a year, at yeah. least a year yeah. after my twin passed away. It was like half of me left my body. I, I, yeah. I, it, that's the only way I can say it. Yeah. Because my spirit was half in me, but yeah. half with Reese. Yeah. And it was like I was floating around my life, you know, in a, in a, in a real sense. It was like half of me wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> Until I finally, like, it's like I had to get half, it's like my twin had gone. And so I had to somehow recover that other half that wanted to be with him and was with him and then ground myself back into my life. Right. So that yeah. affected my marriage. Of, of course. course it did. Of course. You know? And then I felt stable on ground again. And then my dad, the same thing happened with him. So it was like, oh, here I go again. It was like, it was kind of a weird thing because it was like autopilot. Oh, here I go again. It was just like, oh no, because your life, I was so close to both of them. And it's like, your life is, you know, when death happens, this, you know, there's all the psychology around this too, right? Couples that lose a child. Yeah. Like so many of them end, end it ends with divorce. And yeah. I can see why, because you're so stricken with all those stages of grief and what goes along with that is losing yourself in the process yeah. and having to recover yourself. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I'm not a doctor in any um, form or fashion in any of that, but that's how I experienced it. Um, well, I, because, so I, because you, have, you have to learn to redefine yourself I, yes, and your yourself. life without their physical presence in it. Yes. Yeah. And going through such deep losses recalibrates like your belief systems. Mm -hmm. There's so, there's so much that goes along with it. I, mm -hmm. I, I stopped believing in certain things and had new belief systems. Like, can, and, like what, like what? Well, and f for instance, around my life, like, you know, these, th these things is like, wake up, be in the present moment. Like life's short. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Right? Yeah. If, if Reese can die at 35 and we're twins and it's very likely I could die tomorrow. And, you know, my dad was 67 and he just, you know, his life was over within a matter of minutes. So it's like, this can happen to you. What are you going to, you know? Yeah. And so what I did, what I, what I, what I was, what I did was I actually started re-examining my life. Uh -huh. And, and actually in one, it was one day I did wake up and I, and I actually like literally in my heart, it was like, your marriage is over. It wow. wasn't. And I thought, I didn't hear it correctly. That can't be what I'm hearing. I can't be what I'm feeling uh -huh. because that's not, that's it not doesn't make life. sense. It doesn't make sense in your head. Of course not. I married yeah. this person. I love him so very deeply. That has never gone away. Like I love him so much. Am I just, so I was like, well, what do I do now? Like when you hear that and when you feel that, um, you don't want to face it. No. Where did you think? Did, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm going crazy. And so I was able to um, like talk to people in my life who I was very close to who I could actually say like, I think, I think this is wrong, right? This is not right. How am I even thinking these thoughts? Cause I thought like, those are poisonous thoughts. Like, yeah, you know? So um, then you, you start judging yourself and questioning yourself, but it, you feel something inside of you. Oh, that's so strong. And it's not going away. Uh -huh. Like I couldn't even will it away. Like right. I was talking to psychologists by myself going like, I'm having these really dark thoughts about uh -huh. my marriage. Uh -huh. Like how can this be happening? Because uh -huh. you can't imagine not being, I couldn't imagine not being married to him. Uh -huh. But why was I having these thoughts? I was like, maybe because of my brother, because of my dad, like, right? Yeah. Um, so... But then the more time that went on, I started to actually look at my life from, which I have, which I do on a regular basis. Um, instead of being lost in the fear, which we can all do on a like, like minute by minute, moment by moment basis. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I yeah, often yeah. will just 
I've taught myself to get out of that and look at my life from a higher perspective. Yeah. And I started looking at my marriage from this higher place and examining my life from an observer rather than um, being, being I was observing. Effort. Yes. So I was being the observer of my experience. So, <laughs> How else can I put it? No, no, that's a beaut- that's, that's perfect. So how, yeah. how did you, from that observer perspective, what, what, did, you, what seeing, did you see? What did you see? I started seeing that I was no longer aligned in so many ways that I thought I was uh-huh. with my partner. Mm. We, our belief systems were very different. Mm-hmm. Our parenting was like, you know, Night and day. Very, oh, yeah. And, I, and, I, and my voice, I had lost so much of my voice. Mm. And, it, and it makes sense, like, with the reality of what we had gone through in four years, because I was, you know, managing a lot in my family, in the dynamics with the losses that we had had. Uh-huh. And not just family, but our, our, our family's huge on both sides of my yeah. mom and my dad's side. And so that's a lot of people to help. And I'm, I'm very, I'm a very strong person. And especially in tragedy, what I've realized that about myself is like, I can carry a lot and I can, you know, I was caretaking a lot. Uh-huh. And even though my family my, and my husband was doing a lot with our, with our kids, they were taken care of. So I can be supporting the other people around us that are going through this grief as well. Uh-huh. And how can I help you? And what are we doing with this? And, and so what I realized in that is that within my, our dynamic between the four of us, my kids and my husband and I, I had lost a lot of my voice mm-hmm. and it was like, how do I, and I just thought, I'm not going to be able to recover this mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm not going to be happy with the way things are going forward. Mm-hmm. Like everything shifted. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I knew in my heart, it was like, as much as this is going to hurt my family in the short term, in the long term, this is going to be the biggest blessing. And I, and it's, and it is, it is now that way. I feel that this is, I mean, that takes time to, to see and experience. Yeah. Well, and, but, to, and to, and to get past the fear of this doesn't make sense. This you know, I don't understand. Yeah. I have no idea where this is leading, but I feel compelled or propelled or guided yeah. guided some something somewhere is giving me this huge message yeah. that i don't understand and that makes me scared and sad and you know oh. experiencing Everything. all of the multitude I, I, I knew that and this is something that I think a lot of people who are um, separating from their partners and, you know, we say the word breaking up our families, which Uh that has to shift as well, because Mm -hmm. my family is still together. Mm -hmm. We are living in two separate homes, but we like the love has never ended. Our family has never broken up. Like we'll always be a family. Yeah. David, my ex-husband is still part of my family. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forever. And to, like we share children, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we I, share, I, we share 15 years together. So, yeah. but, but, the, but that is, I was, what I wanted to say is that there is the weight that is involved with and the responsibility that I hold with making that decision and how many hearts I broke doing that. I really did. I hurt a lot of people. Right? Do you, do you, I let, do you I let a lot of people down. Do you recognize how much courage that took? Well, you know, I do. Rec- I'm able to see that. I am able to see that. I, I it took a lot of courage for me to do that. But on the on the flip side, um, you know, I have been a people pleaser in my life. I want people to love me and mm-hmm. and like me. And it was like, this is going to, this is going to change a lot of people's minds and hearts about me. And I had to live with that too. Right. But that, but that's the challenge, I think, in any kind of relationship that, you know, we, we want to take care of other people and love people and nurture people and help them feel good. But at the same time, what we want and need is as valuable 
as what they want and need. That's right. And so how do you swallow your voice, swallow your truth and appease everybody else, but really sacrificing your own sense of joy right. and meaning and purpose? Something that you asked me before about what my, like how I grew up and what I was taught about love something you know when when it was my it was my dad who finally made the decision i cannot be married anymore and uh -huh. he would repeatedly tell my brothers and i and my mom like i love you but we just can't be married anymore like this mm -hmm. is it it's mm -hmm. been too much and mm -hmm. i will always I, he would just say to us over and over again i will always love your mother always i will always take care of her but i need to do this Mm -hmm. And as much as, you know, as kids, you're just like, well, this doesn't, we just want you to be together. Like, you know, right. you know, like he was, he was just so set in like the love never ends kids. And don't worry, she was, I'm always going to love her and take care of her. And he, and he loved my mom's family till the day he died and was just so caring and generous with them, you know, even after they divorced. And it's like, that's showing us what true love really is yeah and and also he honored himself in that he didn't he just couldn't do that anymore he couldn't yeah. be in a marriage that he was unhappy in yeah and and it's like so he was a way shower for all of us right yeah yeah i think that was that was one of my big reason and reasons for my for choosing to get divorced is i said to my kids and my ex i want all of us to live in peace yes you no know, there there's too much negative energy and the struggle and the strife and the stress it like is weighing all of us down and it's not good for any of us yeah. you know so i want everyone to experience peace and and it's funny because i was just talking to um, my my 18 year old about it the other day and he said you know mom it was so hard at first because i couldn't understand i mean even though i couldn't stand your relationship because you fought all the time i just thought that that's what normal couples do and so i was worried you know like what's going to happen with us and he said but now i realize that no matter what happens it's all going to work itself out because now everyone is so much more at peace and there's no arguing and fighting and tension and stress and, I mean, they're, you know, they're stress in other areas, but, but as far as like, everybody can just breathe. Yes. Breathe. Well, in our, and that is, I think possibly how it was very, it was very challenging for our family and mm -hmm. friends because we didn't have that. We had peace in our house. We, mm -hmm. we had, it was, you know, a very not not even no, it's not the word amicable it was just like we we really got along and uh -huh. it was we had a very happy home it was that i something in me just knew that i couldn't stay and yeah. and the way i see it as well it now that i'm out of it right you hindsight's 2020 20, right i can look at it with a different lens it's like i i want to continue growing and expanding mm -hmm. and i was feeling like i couldn't grow anymore my you were constricted in that, in that space. yeah in that space and that's okay it's like i need a different vessel or a different like it's like my roots need to spread further uh -huh. and and just because i've chosen to end this this path of marriage with somebody it doesn't mean that like the love has to stop it's never going to stop mm -hmm. it's just changed form Right. Well, I think so it's not, it's not necessarily, we need to look at this in such a, with, I don't, I don't want to look at my, ending my marriage with such a critical eye or what right. went wrong because nothing went wrong. Right. It was like, I think all divine, it was all meant to be as it is now. Yeah. You know, I'm on a different path and so is he, we still have shared, you know, people um, mm -hmm. that we're taking care of and loving and experiencing life with. But it's, it doesn't, it, our paths walking together, like as husband and wife, it's, it's just in, in a different form. Uh huh. Well, you wrote something, I can't, I can't remember if it was on your website or where, but it says, um, you said with your first husband, I see a mirror that someone else held up to reflect back to me where I could grow. Yeah. And I think to me, that is what a relationship is all about. Mm -hmm. The growing doesn't stop. 
<laughs> and wow. to say that, you know, I'm looking like now with my new partner, um, it's such a different, better relationship. It's not like that. You know, it's like we have a definitely a different relationship than I had with my first husband. Uh -huh. Um, we, we, he's a very different person than my first husband. So a very different dynamic, but I'm still forced on a regular basis. And he, so is he like, he's the mirror pointing it back at me. Like, Oh, I, he's, that's a trigger. Oh God. And look at that now. Oh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a like, challenge. No, that's about <laughs> you. No crap. It's about me. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> So the growing doesn't stop. The challenge doesn't stop. This is like relationships are not a fairy tale and it's not, um, and they're not, yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not static. No, of course not. They're dynamic. And it's, I think about that way with my children. I mean, I do everything in my power to be the very best person I can be for them and be a great example and be a great mother and communicator and all of these things. Right. And I mess up on a regular basis and, and, yeah. and we're people just like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So sometimes there's there's challenge and fighting and like conversations and hard conversations and but we still have a lot of fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I and I think that's the thing. Like in our humanity, we do mess up. We have our moments. Yeah. And you know, this is this was the other <clears throat> thing that I wanted to teach my kids. Like you have to be accountable <clears throat> to the people that you love. So when you mess up in your humanity, mess up, um, when you do hurtful things or say hurtful things, you're, you're in a system, right? And so what you do affects the system. And mm -hmm. so when, if the system is like a well-oiled machine, you know, and things are just flowing along with ease and grace, that's great. But then when, when the machine sort of stops or gets stuck, it's like, what do you need to do to bring back that sense of ease and to bring back that sense of connection and that feeling of no matter what happens, I have your back. Yes. You know? Yes. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's pretty great because my kids are able to say to me just, just as much as I am to them. Right. Of course, when they're, when they're stepping on line, um, we're going to have a conversation about it and say like, oh, like, let's get back on track here. And, yeah. and you know, maybe this is a different way to, to look at this and let's talk about it. Right. Um, when I mess up, of course, uh, I'm going to say, I sit them down and be like, I'm very sorry. Like I, that was not cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Ooh, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't like myself <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, and, I'll, and I'm going to do better next time. Like, thank you for showing me that this, like, that was just not, I, I was out of line, right? I was. That's I was not I cool, not mom. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it's great because they, I've modeled that with them and, and they could talk to me about hopefully anything. They, I know they feel that they can. And uh -huh. it's like, and they will say sorry when they've, so that's good, right? Yeah. Having, that, having that vulnerability, being able to have that courage as well. Yeah. To, and so, somebody, somebody that I talked to um, just said, you know, a great way a great way to say it is when somebody is doing something that, you know, is, that is offending you to say, ouch, that hurts. Oh, I like that. And I was like, whoa, I wish I had known that when I was going through my, all, all my struggle and strife, because nice. instead of like lashing back or whatever, just say, ow, that really hurts. Yeah. Because it's, then there's no charge. Right. And it's all like, this is how you're affecting me. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So then, you know, when, when somebody responds to you in that way, it's like, oh, turn that mirror right back around, right? Yeah. How do I need to show up differently? Yeah. So how, how do you and your new partner overcome these triggers? We are in just with every relationship in the process of learning how, because, you know, we've been together for um, a year and a half uh -huh. and you know, you're, you're getting to know somebody, somebody told somebody, I was listening to Jason. You no, know, it wasn't Jason Gaddis. I think it was Jason Gaddis. He said something around 
you are still with in the very beginning you're with a stranger that you're getting to know right yeah yeah <laughs> You have this, I like, think your you whole life, no matter how long you're with a stranger. <laughs> yes, actually, Esther Perel says that too. She's like, yeah. if you if you actually treat your spouse, your partner, like like a stranger, like you're still needing to get to know them, not yeah. pretending like yeah. you know everything about them and finishing their sentences and doing everything else. Right. Um. You'll you'll be way ahead of the game. Yep. And I thought that is to keep, to keep the intimacy and the intrigue going is actually presenting it or. Um, looking at your relationship that way. And so I'm still learning how he, he communicates and how, like, if there is a difficulty in having these conversations, it's like maybe he, he'll pull back and I'm more like, let's talk about it or vice versa. Uh -huh. So we're still learning our dynamics. But I think overall, we, we have such, um, such a focus on each other's happiness and contentment, right? Mm -hmm. Are you okay that, you know, even if I need space from like a heated conversation for five minutes, I'll say to him, like, I'm going to have a shower and like, like, let's just <laughs> everything on hold. And then he'll come back, you know, within that time period. And then we can talk afterwards. Uh -huh. So it's learning, it's learning each other. Right. Uh -huh. and, I, and I've said to him, because it is a lot going through bringing two families together, you know, he's walking into, you know, with me and not only my two kids, which is a big deal, right. but also, like I said, I've got a huge family dynamic. Like yeah. all my aunts and uncles, all my cousins, like it's a lot for him to be coming into. And he's <laughs> got a family, as, like his family as well, that I'm, it's like you're joining these forces, right? Right. Um, and so we, he's been talking to his, he's got a psychologist that he goes to. I've got mine. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're going to start doing, we will do couples counseling when, <laughs> when the time comes. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Yeah. For forever. Why not? Why right? not? Because you know, I don't I don't think it's something like it's tools. Oh, it's hard oh, tools in your exactly. toolbox. Exactly. Yeah. It's like when you only have one or two tools in your toolbox and you constantly are hitting a wall of like, this isn't working, this isn't working. It's like, okay, perhaps it's time to discover a new tool. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you um how, because I'm thinking about how, when you were talking about your former husband, that you said you lost your voice. So how in this relationship are you showing up being able to express your truth and, and speak your voice in a way that you weren't maybe able to in your past? There's been times when I have not wanted I've not wanted to say something and because it's like, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I don't want to hurt him. I want to protect him. Uh -huh. And so I have been, I've examined that in myself uh -huh. and, and sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer, um, which is good. You know, I will go talk to my, you know, my counselor about that and say, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going through right now. Like, uh -huh. is this something that I need to talk to him about? Or is this something that I need to work out in myself? Because that's something that, because I've started, like, I've been on this path of self-evolution, growth, consciousness. Your since, whole life. Yeah. Your whole <laughs> since life. I was like, Come on. I would say, like, yes, I, but 17 maybe would, would, was when I just really hit the, all right, I'm on this, right? <laughs> Never stop. When your awareness of it, yeah. yeah. And, and with that, I think comes, there's a lot of self-analysis. Yeah. And getting kind of in your mind, in my mind, that's how I kind of operate sometimes. Am I overthinking this? Am I being overcritical? Or so that's what I get in. I'll get in this kind of cycle. Uh -huh. And then once I communicate that to my partner, like this is where I've been at for the past three days. He's like, well, why didn't you talk to me about this sooner? Like I, like, you've been over maybe thinking I'm this. Over analyzing it. Yeah. Yes. And we could have, we could have kind of sorted this out sooner. So that's where I'm at. It's been a great learning and it's probably gonna take me you know another lifetime to learn it <laughs> but like maybe speaking up sooner right rather than withholding at all but right? that's the thing i mean even when you said i i'm holding it in because i want to protect him mm -hmm. why does he need protecting yeah he doesn't protect right? protect protecting from what the truth your truth yeah protecting from your truth i don't i don't think that I don't think that people need to be protected from your truth. I mean, that's, that's why 
so many crazy things happen in families in order to protect people. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you an, I'll give you just a little example. Like my mother-in-law, when she was alive, she would be in the hospital. Well, they wouldn't tell us for like two weeks because they didn't, because they were protecting us. They didn't want us to worry or whatever. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you are here in, in your system, you know, if it's in your partnership or your family um, or your family of origin or whatever system you're in, it's like everyone has, um, has the right to be who they are and to speak their truth. And it shouldn't be, well, I don't want to say because I don't want to hurt your feelings. Well, of course we don't want to hurt your feelings. I love you and I care about you. That's not the point. The point is for me to say, this is my experience. And for your partner to say, okay, I'm going to be the observer and be the witness to your experience. And so instead of, you know, sort of blame blame, shame, criticism, guilt, judgment. Um, and instead of this, um, or, or I'm going to fix it for you. Yes. It should be the observer, the higher perspective, that curiosity of, huh, wonder what this is about for you. Mm -hmm. I think that we, um, like as partners, we're, I think we're just like so on that path of being better at that, right? Mm -hmm. And just whatever we can do to support each other's growth and, right, just provide like that safe space to be mm -hmm. who we are, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's really what, what it comes down to. It's like yeah. not squashing each other or it's like if you've got a belief, okay, that's your belief. I don't, we don't have to agree on everything. We don't you know? have to agree. And because, I, and because I don't agree doesn't mean that I lose respect for you or that I don't want to be connected to you. It's just like, we're just different. Yes, that's right. So it's, it's coming to this place of real, um, this is something that I talk about a lot. It's like you, all of these situations that are blocks to love, either within yourself or with somebody else, I believe that this is where we learn for ourselves how to have more compassion for ourselves and each other, more compassion, more understanding, more acceptance, more forgiveness, perhaps, and just letting people be who they are. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. I think this is, I think this is our purpose. Mm -hmm. That this is the, the real love that promotes growth, that honors who you are, honors who I am. When I'm showing up in my full truth, and, you know, I, I have no intentions of hurting people, but some things like your decision to leave your husband, my decision to leave my husband, it is going to hurt people. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's really honoring me. Mm -hmm. And I deserve to be honored from myself as much as you deserve to honor what's right for you. Mm hmm yeah. So how do so how do we navigate how do we navigate this in our partnerships in our families? It is a yeah, it's something that I think we're not like Terry Cole talks about this about how and you asked me the question, how did I learn about relationships growing mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. we're, we're taught, many, many of us are taught um, not the healthiest dynamics. <laughs> and we're not taught the, the skills or the, given the tools 
to be in healthy relationships, healthy mm -hmm. partnerships. Mm -hmm. The modeling was not great. Some, some, some of us grew up with, you know, parents that could show us or caregivers that showed us like an amazing example. I actually right? had parents who showed me an amazing example, but yeah. for some reason I was not able to replicate that with my ex-husband. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's, I mean, that's, there's no judgment around that. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, in any case, here we are adults navigating, um, you know, we, we all like most, like, I think we're wired for partnership, you yeah. know, and those of us that do want it, that want to be in a loving relationship. And if you don't necessarily, I think we can all grow and be better partners. Right. So, you know, it doesn't stop when you meet somebody. First of no. all, it's like, you know, the whole, the whole idea, but when you're single and it's like, when I find that person, it's going to be all rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> They fairy say tales, fairy tales, fairy tales, fairy I mean, tales. That's not the case, right? The, <laughs> we, the, the real work starts in partnership. Uh -huh. um, but I think that's why I, I'm just so grateful that I'm in this space where we are surrounded by so many people that can give us the tools and, mm -hmm. and perspectives mm -hmm. um, to, do it, to do it in the best way, to be mm -hmm. in partnership in the best way, how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Like Mark Groves, like what are like I just love his perspectives, right? And he's so yeah. cut and dry. And just yeah. like damn. Yeah. He's no so, bullshit for sure. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the humor, right? The humor. Yeah. So just if the more people that we can bring in that are that are like the gurus and the wisdom, way showers, teachers. Yeah. Teachers. Like let's let's have let's come together and show each other the way. Yeah. So well, and I, I and I love and I love too because Esther says you know, I don't have the answers. Maybe what I say today is not what I'll think tomorrow. And I that's think that right. that's, I think that's true for all of us. So yes. something that resonates with me, something that I believe in. And then tomorrow I go, huh, I'm questioning that, huh? Why, I wonder what that's about. Maybe I'm thinking something else. And this yes. is, I mean, this is the, be this is the beauty of this sort of, um, it's just an ongoing process. You know, your, your journey of your whole life, there's not like one particular destination except love, except love. You know, where can, where can I express more love? Where can I feel more connection with the people around me? Where can I um, grow and evolve to become more loving and more um, expansive and more authentic and more of who I really am. Yeah. Well, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you go. Oh, I was, I was going to say that that really is the mission of Real Love Ready. And I was, yeah. before I launched the business, I had um, months and months of planning sessions around my dining room table um, with a team of four women. Uh -huh. And between us, it was just drilling it down, drilling it down. Like, what is the essence of this business? Why do I want to create this company? Uh -huh. um, what is my mission? And what do we want, hope to accomplish? Like the bigger mission. Right. And it was like, it is this, like the bigger mission is that love changes everything. Yeah. Right. And how do we do it in this? And then it's, if it's here, it's like, okay, it's like our partnerships are a, an amazing, like playground uh -huh. vessel to, to create more love. Uh -huh. Right. And if we are happy and, and nurtured and thriving in our partnerships, we can feel supported uh -huh. You know, I think about a tree, right? And a tree has these roots that go deep, deep, deep down in the foundation. Yeah. And the stronger our foundation is, and I think of our partnerships can be that for us, uh -huh. the, the stronger we can be to just branch out. Exactly. And it's exactly. like, you've got this, talk about a cheerleader. You know, if you have a partner that is your greatest cheerleader in life, uh -huh. then you really can step into what you are supposed to be, what you're, what you're meant to be, what you came here to be. You can you know? branch out as much yeah. as you need to branch out as opposed I to being, grow, being withered. Feel. Yeah. Being withered and, um, you know, suppressed or whatever so that you can't grow. And I, I love, really, yeah, I love how you said it's a playground. 
because then that makes it like, even though it's, even though it's work built, you know, building the sand castle and the playground or whatever, it's fun. It's really about an exploration, an exploration yeah. into who am I and who do I want to become and who are you and who are, who do you want to become and how can we play together and help support each other into, you know, branching out and becoming the mighty oak tree that we were all destined to be from our little acorns. Yeah. So how did you, I mean, I love this summit. <laughs> You're, I, you, please talk about it because you have some heavy hitters that are coming to this. This is the very first one, right? Yes, it is. It's our inaugural summit. Inaugural. Is, <laughs> inaugural. <laughs> it's, a tongue, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> How did you um, get these heavy hitters? This is like incredible. Well, I... I wanted this to, I wanted um, Real Love Ready Summit, our first one to start off with a bang. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I had already, um, I've known Danielle for quite a few years and I saw her live. Um, I think the, last, the first time I saw her live was 2000, um, maybe 2012 uh -huh. um, in, in Victoria. And I was just blown away by yeah. her. Yeah, she's amazing. And, and so I've always, you know, I've been following Danielle ever since. Uh -huh. I saw Terry Cole live in Alberta last year. And I thought, I've never, I'd never heard of her before. Uh -huh. You know, where you end up in this right place at the right time and you're just exposed to like, exactly. I was just like, ah, yeah. Terry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's so funny and wise and just so witty. Um, and, and I, and, and I, and I, and I, one of my really good friends, well, one of my best friends, she sent me a YouTube video when I was going through my separation with Esther Perel uh -huh. and I had never heard of her either. I never so, heard of her I was, either until I, I, May. I, 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 turned, I turned up the volume and I just was like sitting there going, what in the heck? Like everything she was saying just resonated so true with me. I, I binge watched her for the first like month. It yeah. was just like video after video after video. And I was just like, this woman is speaking my language. Oh my gosh, finally somebody that's talking about all of these important issues and why didn't I know about her when I was going through my separation? The same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we also, and when I was, when I was training to become a matchmaker, uh -huh. and this is, I guess, just talking about bad evolution was, um, I did my research and found Rachel Greenwald. Uh -huh. And I thought if I'm going to become a matchmaker, I need to learn from the very best in the industry. Uh huh. And she is responsible for hundreds and hundreds of marriages. Wow. And she has coached and um, she's written New York Times bestselling books and she's coached thousands of women on, um, on online dating. And she can't take thousands of matchmaking clients, but she can coach, you know, thousands. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. like, her methods are just so tried and true. I mean, she um, is a Harvard graduate. She met her husband at Harvard. Not smart and, at all. No, but her story is fantastic. <laughs> because, well, this is while she was getting her postgraduate degree. Uh -huh. She was like, I'm in my, oh, I'm sorry about my dog barking. Okay. Um, she, she was, I think she was in her early 20s. And she had said to her family and friends, like, I'm ready for my partner. I want to meet my husband. And I'm going to come at this like I'm, like I'm getting my degree in business, right? Wow. So she applied the strategies of her MBA to finding her husband. And she had all these questions. Oh, you know, should I tell my dog to be quiet? Is it really annoying? I'm sorry. He'll stop. He, he thinks he's like the ruler of the universe in our little house. And he's like, barks at everybody that walks by going, you're in my street. You're on my street. And he's a cute little golden doodle that wouldn't hurt a soul. But anyway, um, he's not afraid to use his voice. So anyways, she created these, like this strategy on, she had all these questions she wanted to ask. And she was like, I am going to ask everybody I know in my network. This is before the times of Facebook, really. Oh, uh -huh. And so she asked everybody that she was meeting, professors, like every, and she was con in contact with Harvard. Who do you know that the kind of guys, and it was like the values are really important uh -huh. and he needs to be kind. He needs to be like, she was, she was all about what's on the inside, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he has to have strong like connection to his family. Like friends are important. Like I just, you know, she'll, she can tell the story when, 
anyways, <laughs> within a matter of time, she really treated her dates as like, it was like interviewing, like but research. of course, like research. <laughs> But in a matter of time, she met her husband. Like she was on a mission. And there's something about that as well, right? Like when we put our focus on something we really want in our lives, it's amazing how the universe, you know, conspires conspires to bring that to fruition. Yeah. Bring that person into focus. Or, you know, the mission we're on, like let's say our mission is like to create a company or a podcast like you're doing and bring more love into this world and relationship advice and tools. Like it, it, it does the relationship or sorry, the universe does conspire to help us. Yeah. And so it was just a matter of time before she met her husband and so she wrote a book about it. Um, so Rachel Greenwald is our matchmaker dating coach extraordinaire. Who's going to be like sharing her like experience and wisdom and then Mark Groves. So, so the summit is a culmination of all these amazing people coming um, together and all of us in community to learn from and grow and, and, and share. Um, and I think there's just such a powerful dynamic when group comes, groups come together. Yeah. I mean, right now we're having to do this digitally, like virtually, which we have to continue to do. Right. Um, but coming together in person, we're, um, it's September 11th and 12th are the new dates. Oh, I so, was just going to ask you. And I'm so announcing that right now them, before it's going them. live on the website. But yes, those are our new dates. September 11th and 12th. Guess yes. what? The twelfth is my birthday. Happy birthday! Oh my god! Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday! Well, okay, that's great. That's gonna be the best birthday present ever. It really will be. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and so the summit is the in-person experience, and I am working with. Um, I'm having a call with High Tide at one Good. o'clock. It's 11, 11 right now. I just want to make a mention that that is like so amazing and powerful. <laughs> but that's all part of creation, right? Looking at numbers and paying attention to like, you know, we're on like little crumbs that we're given. As right. Like the little, the right. little guideposts. Yeah. Yes. Um, and just building up this community of resource yes. and resources yes. so that you know, you're not alone um, and you don't know who this person is. Well, I'll, I'll make an introduction and exactly. I don't know who all these people are. Exactly. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of people who have come in, um, come into the real love ready community are like, I don't know who Terry Cole is. Okay. Well, great. Here she is. Here's an introduction. Uh-huh. And this is what she has to offer. Do you resonate with that? Yes. I learned something great. Right. Oh, well, I didn't know what Danielle Laporte was all about. Well, here she is. Here's her podcast. Take a listen. I mean, she's, she's just full of gems, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's just making those connections with people that they can like, I just, we're all here to learn and love and grow with, with each other. Right. It's like, we're all pebbles and what pebble we put in the water. It re- it's that ripple effect ripple because effect, I, yeah. because I'm finding this too. I mean, you know, I just, I, it's so bizarre because I started the podcast because a year ago, I started a relationship coaching business because I used to be a therapist and um, in Texas, but my license expired, but I know that this is part of my work, right? Yes. And so I've been doing that. And um, in May, for some reason, something popped up on my feed that was Esther Perel mm-hmm. <laughs> and Esther binge watching had been interviewed by a guy named Brian Rose from London Real. He has his own podcast. Oh, have you ever considered doing a podcast? And it was like that feeling was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. I don't know why. I don't know what's going to happen. But then joining Esther Perel's group and, you know, and then meeting you. I mean, this is how we were introduced through Esther Perel's Facebook discussion group. And it's like all of these things are just growing and expanding and it's getting so exciting. (laughs) Yes, it is. It is. And I think that feeling, yeah. When you're just going back to what we were talking about with, you know, when just divorce and separation and when you, you can be in so much pain and anguish. Uh-huh. And I was, when I was going through, when I knew that I'm, I'm, I was ending my marriage, uh-huh. I was so filled with, with all of those feelings that are just yeah. so heavy and, yeah. and just the fear that yeah. can just envelop you. Yeah. But I was also in this it was just this juxtaposition, but a marrying of like knowing that this was right. Uh-huh. Knowing that 
like even though there was chaos in my mind and it felt like I was in a tornado of like, like this is going to be very destructive. Uh -huh. I also at the same time had a sense of peace. Peace. Yes. Like how is that even possible? But it is. Yeah. It's like you can have two things that are very like that are like seem very incongruent, but yes. it's like they're they are, like they're together at the same time. Yeah. It's like you can feel completely like off balance, but also know that you're on the right path. Yeah. Like because there's so much uncertainty, but you're like. So my point is around going back to what we just talked about, um, starting this company and doing everything that I'm doing back in the love business uh -huh. it is like, I'm on the right path. I know I am. And I just keep getting reminders. Like our talk right now is, is definitely yeah. like, just, yeah, you're on the right. Like, and just keep going one step at a time. And I think, isn't that true with everything in our lives, right? If you, yeah. if you feel like you're on the right path, you know it then it's like, even though you could be surrounded by chaos and also you're also filled with fear and uncertainty, like look at the world we're in right now. Yeah. Um, you, you will be given those breadcrumbs. You will be given those signs mm -hmm. that, you know, keep going, just mm -hmm. keep those, keep, you know, that one step forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, I mean, I think that's, I think that's what happens in relationships too, because, you know, you, you talk about the dichotomy of, this and this, you know, like I'm really pissed off at you right now. And I love, and I love you so, so much. Yes. They're not mutually <laughs> yeah. exclusive, right? They're I not. am scared shitless and there's chaos and fear and angst. And, but it, but at the same time, I feel this sense of peace. Like, I don't know why, I don't know where it's leading me. I just know that it is true. Yes. And that I need to honor that because it's who I am and it's something that's trying to be born out of me or created through me or, you know, like, I feel like we're just, we're all conduits anyways. And, and, yeah. and all of the, you know, this is that higher perspective. We're all conduits and how, how these inspiration, um, inspirations and insights and things come through us. And when we don't honor them, it's like, you're, you're, you're that, you're that tree that is like shrinking its branches, right? But when you honor it, it's like you feel that sense of peace and that sense of stability amidst the chaos. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that for yourself so that you can be an example for others. Yeah. I am very sure. Yeah. I am so glad you're doing this. <laughs> I am too. And I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing. It's, um, yeah. I, I feel like all of these connections were already like preordained. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like, we're just really opening our eyes and going, oh yeah, I recognize you. Yeah. This is how I feel about you. That's why I reached out to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really, I, I'm, I'm so honored. I really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for our connection. Yeah. yeah. So September 11th. So you want to tell people about how they can. The easiest way to um, learn everything about the company and what we're doing with the real love ready is to go to our website uh -huh. and it's, realloveready.com. Uh -huh. We're on Instagram, Real Love Ready. Facebook, Real Love Ready. <laughs> uh -huh. And the tickets still show the old date. Okay. Uh, but because of what we're going through with COVID-19, we have switched. Um, and we're just in the process of doing all the updates, showing uh -huh. the new date. Uh -huh. So um, what, what everybody may want to do is just press pause on, if you absolutely, if you purchase a ticket now, it'll be valid for the new dates. But right now it's still showing the old dates, but I will, I'll, we're getting on that this week. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you like, are you still having it April? <laughs> oh yes. No, we, we made a little, we made an announcement. We posted on the website oh, okay. um, saying that we are postponing. Nobody's traveling. I mean, we, yeah. we are not allowed to, we're not allowed to travel and I sure wouldn't want anybody to go anywhere. We are in self-isolation here yeah. in, um, in BC. I don't know about you, but 
it's it's um we just need to contain all of this chaos before right so stay stay healthy and safe yeah and we'll be back in the fall i think september 11th and 12th is going to be like the um, divine time to hold it anyway it's going to be magic be. yes for your birthday time <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I, and I'm so glad I'll meet you there in person. I'm so excited to meet you. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I, it, well. Uh, um, I was going to ask you, when you were a dating coach, what were the things, what were the things that you, like some wisdom that you can give us about dating and about um, like what to look for? What I like, what do you want to teach your daughters about dating? What do I want to teach my daughters about dating? I think it all starts um, with looking at yourself and what you, what you, who you are mm -hmm. and what you are bringing to the table mm -hmm. in any relationship, who you are and what you want to give in a relationship what you can give and, and how you want it to look like, how you want it to be, what you want to create. And I was, when I was coaching, um, so often there people would come to me and say like, I really need help in my dating life. I'm meeting the wrong people. They're not in alignment with who I am. Like mm -hmm. there's no similarities between us. Mm -hmm. You know, he or she doesn't look the right way or act the right way. They're not in this, the right profession, these sorts of things. Here's my list of what I want, right? And I understand that whole mentality of like, this is what I want to manifest. And this is like, you know, the red, the red beamer with like, you know, <laughs> tall, <laughs> dark and handsome, it. lots yeah. of money, <laughs> this color of seats. And it's got this type of engine and you're very specific. Like you're choosing out of a catalog. Yeah. That's not the right approach. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's more like, this is who I am. This is like what I can give and bring to a relationship. And what I, who the, the type of person on the inside that I'd like to create something with. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you, you can't focus on the outside package because you cannot imagine what that person is going to look like or show up like in your wildest dreams. You can't. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like the universe has infinite possibilities of all of those things that's going to calibrate the right person for you, but it's like showing up in the right way. So I'm going to give you an example. Throw away your list of like, you know, six foot, you know, this kind of job, this income, that's just all. Well, those of, are all you know. superficial things, right? <laughs> those are all superficial. Well, well, they are, but I think it's really focusing on how you want to feel in this relationship. Yeah. So making that part of your vision, your dream board, right? Yeah. And then you need to be super honest about who you are and know yourself and be upfront and honest about that from the get go. So, you know, when I was writing, I was helping people with their online profiles. Um, and it's like you turn it into a story, right? And be unique because you are unique. Um, and I, like, I wrote my own online profile when, before I met my partner online. Uh -huh. And I was so upfront and honest. I said, like, I, I, I told this in my story. I have, um, I'm, I'm a divorced woman with two beautiful children. Um, if you are somebody that is, you know, wants to have children that of your own, that's just probably not going to happen right. because I'm done. Right. I'm done. <laughs> so yeah. like, don't, and I, like, I, but I didn't say don't call me, like, but just like pretty much put it out there so that, you know, you're weeding out, right? Yeah. But people exactly. like, I, I'm not setting these wrong expectations. Right. Um, health and wellness is super important to me. Like I exercise all the time and I'm outdoors mm -hmm. and I, I'd rather like, um, hike up a mountain and go to yoga five days a week. Like I'm pretty much setting the, the scene for the kind of person that I am <laughs> in my personality, but um, it's really just how I want to feel. I want to feel like, um, super amazingly attracted to somebody uh -huh. and he, I want him to feel physically, sexually, um, attracted to me as well. Uh -huh. Hey, you could come in any package as long as I feel attracted to him. Exactly. Hey, right? <laughs> exactly. Because some, because sometimes you, you know, you think you have an idea of something and then something totally shocks you. You're like, whoa, I've never been attracted to that, but wow, I feel like lots going on there. Like, talk about your type. What's your type? Like, give that up to the universe. To, like, you don't need a type because that's just putting everything into a box. 
No, and I mean, where are the boxes? There's well, no boxes. That, no, I mean, I think, I think that's where the feelings come in. It's like, I want somebody who's kind. I want somebody who's supportive or, okay. So say, you know, I want to feel um, supported. I want to feel understood. I want to feel seen. I want to feel um, connected. You know, I want to yes. feel like somebody who's um, going to have my back no matter what. Um, when I show up in my chaos that they're going to be stable <laughs> and sort of contain me or give me the space to, you know, display right. my chaos or whatever. It's like all of those things. And I've never actually, Rob and I have never heard anyone say, um, that you should, that you should consider what you have to offer a partner because it's usually like, what do I want? What do I want? Not what do I want to give? Yeah. What do I bring to the table? Uh huh. Uh, because I, and I, something that I did say in my, in my profile and in, into the universe, not just on my profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my vision board, was, I, I, I made a beautiful, like, you know, um, paper vision board and I put it in my phone and uh -huh. then I did my online profile and I was talking to people. So I was doing all the different things to bring this person in. Uh huh. Um, the other thing that was really important to me was, I am, and I wrote this as well, like I am such a positive, optimistic, you know, the glass is overflowing. Rose-colored glasses, that's me. Yes, but, they, but it's not half, half full, half empty, it is overflowing. Yeah. The world is abundant, yeah. life is abundant. Yeah. And There's whoever this person is- There's plenty to go around. Yeah, whoever this person is, you are gonna be walking into an abundant world because uh -huh. that is my life, uh -huh. I have, so many friends, so much family, so much love, so much uh -huh. joy, uh -huh. you know, like I'm going to share that with you and, and you, you in return, um, you have to have an, you have to have a very positive attitude as well. If you're, if you're like that kind of like negative Nelly or all, like, um, not the, what's the word pessimist, uh -huh. you and I are not in alignment. So uh -huh. like, no, right. So yeah. it's just like, kind of just be like, just pronouncing, declaring who you are. Uh -huh. and, and, and whoever that person is, those people are that come your way. That's the other thing is that I talked about when I was coaching is like, you're, we are declaring who you are in this profile and in the matchmaking clients I'm meeting that introduced you to, I'm, I'm hoping that they are in alignment with, that really want to meet this person that you are declaring that you are. Uh -huh. And these encounters that you are experiencing when you meet this person new, they are divine. They are divine encounters. So whether this be a five minute, 10 minute coffee date, and you're like, no, that's a no go. Uh -huh. Well, you know what? I'd like you to um, really focus on being present during this meeting mm -hmm. and seeing what can I bring to mm -hmm. this experience? Mm -hmm. What can I learn from this person? Yeah. Be curious. Yeah. Like, like you're going to walk away with something because yeah. that was a divine encounter. Right. And let's say you walk away with just a really, I'm just, I don't know. Let's say you, there, there was definitely times when I, I would set up many, many hundreds of introductions and sometimes it would go sideways. There, there was something negative about that experience. Uh -huh. Well, what did you learn about yourself? Yeah. How did you handle it? Uh -huh. Did you, you know, did you, did you bring grace to the situation? Were you able to use your voice and say like, no, I'm not okay with what you just said. Yeah. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, we're prac there's a, there's it's like a practicing, right? You're in school. Yeah. <laughs> so for like getting ready for the next one. Or so anyway, and staying open and staying still on course because sometimes uh -huh. you can get derailed and be like, I am just not I'm I'm giving up, giving up hope. So that was the other the other way that I was I mean, I, I just was able to be cheerleading these people on and being like, yeah. just don't give up. Yeah. So it was it was it was just a uh, quite an amazing experience being a coach and matchmaker, but I'm still, I, I'm, I'm definitely still on that road. It's just now it's like bringing it's everybody in a different in way. Help. Yeah. It's yes. a different way. Yes. And every, every, um, situation, every circumstance is an opportunity for learning and for growth. Yeah. Yeah. So That's this, sure. and, um, you know, with yourself, with yourself first, cause that's yes. where it all starts. And that's why, that's why I think that this, you know, your internal reflection, your, your ability to be the observer of yourself 
and, and your own triggers, um, you know, that you need to work through areas and places in your life where you need to grow and where you need to give more love maybe to yourself uh, first, you know, or to other people, it all starts with you. Yeah. You know, stop waiting for your partner to make you happy. Stop waiting for your partner to um, create the, uh, some amazing life for you. It's like, you have all the power. You know, the only person you can control or change is yourself. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> it pretty much sums it up. I, <laughs> you, I think, oh my gosh, like I have such a great feeling about what you're doing. I think, you know, it, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Yeah. It's gonna be huge. And these are the ways that we, you know, because of the work, that we're doing on ourselves and that we continue to do, you know, that we can show up in our full light and love and not the rainbows and unicorns, but the reality of the compassion and the understanding and the acceptance and forgiveness and just um, allowing our own humanity. It's like, this is, this is how we ripple out to the rest of the world. So yeah. you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah, you're you're really beautiful. Aw, thank you. Thank you so much. That. Thank you so much for being here today and thank you for how you're showing up in the world and um what you're doing. I'm so excited for you. Oh, thank you for having me. And I'm excited too. We'll continue to like we're we're gonna continue staying connected and um follow along in each other's journey and be part of each other's journey. Yeah. So, and yeah. I'll see you in September. Woohoo! <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So remind everybody how they can find you. Realloveready.com okay. on Instagram, Facebook, um, Real Love Ready. Lots of so. great, lots of great articles and insights and videos. And um, yeah, I mean, you're a catalyst. You're for sure a catalyst uh, for love. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You yeah. are too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thank uh, you. Yeah. So hold on just a second. I'm going to, um, I know that all of my listeners will love and appreciate this uh, conversation because there's so much wisdom and insight. And um, so please, for all of you, uh, subscribe and share with your friends to the Wake Up to Real Love podcast. And if anyone would like support in overcoming heartbreak and betrayal, this is what I specialize in. And so you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Awakening with Dawn. And the, um, oh, I forgot. I need to ask you my last question is how do you define real love? Um, I have this cross above my office door uh -huh. and it says love wide uh. and it's just such a beautiful like two words say everything uh -huh. right so it's like when you could be the love within yourself like just be love uh -huh. like being the most loving person you know it's another saying that of mine that I just like, I love it because it's like just being the loving, the most loving person, you know, you're like, it's not necessarily looking for the love of your life. Like be yeah. that love yeah. and you will attract, like you will, like you're, you can beam that out to the world yeah. and you will receive, yeah. you know, tenfold back. Yeah. Right. It's like when we're generous, yeah. it's like, you're never going to be lacking. Yeah. You're going to get 10 times back. Yeah. You could give a hundred dollars tomorrow to some person on the street and somehow you know, maybe a, a year later, you'll get a $300 check out of nowhere. Who knows where it came from? I don't know. But it's like, it just comes back to you, right? Mm -hmm. Love is the same way. It's just, it's, it expands. It's exponential. The, the more you give, the more you're open to receive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so love wide. Love wide. I love that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And so, that, you. so that, goes, that goes with the last thing that I like to say in my podcast is the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. That's where it all starts. So yeah. 
love yourself wide and you can love each other wide. So yes. Thank you so, so much, Robin, for being here with me. Thank you. Today. It was so fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks, listeners. Every day, wake up to more real love. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.